Can I start? <laughs> okay, good. So can I start? Then? Okay, perfect. Um, yes, great, perfect. Uh, so, um, great. Yeah, I'm not sure how I can do that. I think I'm unmuted. So is it unmuted? Or maybe you can do it, you can override maybe and make it. Right, so you think it's okay? Good, good, right. Okay, let me then get started. Um, okay, so uh, let me first thank the organizers for the kind invitation. It's um, really a great pleasure to uh, take part in this wonderful workshop and I'm very much looking forward to uh, the rest of the uh, workshop this week. So um, what I'm going to talk about today is really about uh, transport phenomena in TT bar deformed conformal field theories. And um, you might wonder what's the, really the point of, you know, studying the um, out of the equilibrium dynamics of this, these kind of seemingly, you know, rather unusual theories. Um, and I hope I can convince you that it's really natural. And um, at least as far as our initial motivation of this project uh, with Marco Medeniak and Giuseppe for Castro is concerned, it was quite natural for us to look into these theories because initially what we wanted to do is to say something about diffusion and just understand better about the structure and the, uh, the nature of the diffusion in many body systems. Um, so what I mean by, can just, sorry, I should just, Yes. No. Oh, okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry about that. Um, so what I mean by diffusion is actually quite simple and I guess the same as what you have in mind. So for instance, you can imagine a situation like, like this. So initially you have some um, density concentration at say x equals zero and see what happens uh, after having this kind of initial condition. And depending on whether your system is having a momentum conservation law, which is equivalent to saying that whether the system has translation invariance, there could be two scenarios. But what wouldn't really change is the fact that uh, the fluid profile will eventually undergo some kind of uh, diffusive broadening. So the spreading over space uh, with the rate being controlled by two to the one, t to the one half. And this kind of process is quite ubiquitous, possibly except uh, the uh, one dimensional non integrable systems with translation invariance because these systems are known to exhibit uh, not really diffusion but uh, super diffusion. So, this kind of broadening process is actually faster than diffusion. But in general, this is quite supposed to be ubiquitous, so it's quite important to learn something about diffusion. So, uh, we asked a simple question, which is can we understand diffusion <coughs> in mini body systems, in particular in quantum mini body systems, in a control controlled way? And what I mean by controlled way is to look, look into some really simple models, minimum models that are still analytically tractable, but retaining some sort of non-trivial diffusion. And to that end, we initially thought of looking into 2D CFT, so 2D conformal field theories, but apparently these systems are not having any diffusion. Of course, if you go to a higher dimensional CFTs, they can really show non-trivial diffusions, but in one plus one dimension, they can't quite have diffusion because um, because essentially the elementary excitations into the to the CFTs are either right or left neighbors and they don't really talk to each other. Um, or you can also do a you know, usual CFT exercise and just, uh, explicitly show that there's no diffusion. Um, so the kind of point of view I want to adapt here is to treat to the CFTs in general as some sort of massless limits of massive integrable quantum field theories. And this kind of point of view was, I think, advocated by several people in the 90s, but uh, the paper that really pinned down this kind of idea in a really solid way was uh, written by Bajanov, Lukanov, and Zamochko. So I'm going to sort of refer to that paper for this kind of uh, interpretation of 2D CFTs. And once you adopt this kind of point of view, you can actually invoke the fact that um, well, uh, observation coming from generalized hydrodynamics, so Raja talked about it, that um, in uh, integral systems in general, you can have non-trivial diffusion only if 
the system has non-trivial interaction, meaning that the cross particles scatter in a non-trivial way. And this doesn't quite happen to these CFTs. So you can also argue in that way that there cannot be any diffusion. So we thought, well, could we do something about it? And um, an obvious way is to try to, you know, do something about the CFT. I mean, do some sort of de uh, deformation to, to these CFTs. And there are, of course, several ways to do that. And, but um, luckily, uh, soon after we uh, started this project, we learned that there is really a nice kind of deformation that precisely does the job we wanted to do, which is to introduce a non trivial scattering between the left and right movers. So upon the scatter, encountering these two movers would undergo some kind of scatterings if you do this kind of deformation to, to, uh, to these CFTs. So that was how we kind of ended up with, you know, learning and studying TT bar deformation, TT bar deformed CFTs out of equilibrium. But as it turns out, um, of course, diffusion is interesting in this kind of models, but already at the level of ballistic transport, TT bar deformed CFTs uh, provide some interesting insights. So I'm going to also talk about it briefly in this talk. Right. So um, to set a stage, I, um, I wouldn't really um, deal with generic CFTs, but rather just focus on a very simple kind of CFT, which is the criticalizing CFT, um, whose Lagrangian is given in this very simple way, where the Psi is the free Marina fermion. Um, this is simple because essentially this is free and center charge is simply given by one half. And the stress energy tensor is simply like this. And um, of course, also you can compute uh, other thermodynamic sum quantities like the free energy density at finite temperature. You can do, um, you can compute it in different ways. Like you can use the usual, usual safety machinery, or you can also, you know, uh, use the fact that this is a free kind of free field theory where you can uh, build up the excitations based on the quasi particle excitation, etc. Anyway, either way, you can calculate the free energy density in a very a straightforward way and you ended up you end up with this kind of simple expression um, and i'm going to see how this kind of uh, behavior is going to be altered by the tt bar deformation and also for a later convenience i'm going to define redefine uh, the, B, uh, the free energy density by rescaling like this just for convenience right so having the kind of safety we have in mind how can we do a tt bar deformation to the criticalizing model uh, it's actually quite simple. So the way to do a deformation is, is to simply keep adding an infinitesimal term that is proportional to the determinant of stress energy tensor in the incremental fashion. And of course, the theory you start out with is given by the Lagrangian of the, the critical Eisen model. So this is a deformation in terms of Lagrangian. Um, and one of the really important points here is that this is not quite the same as the usual, you know, kind of um, perturbation or, you know, uh, in, in QFT. So if you, for example, want to modify this kind of free theory in the usual uh, QFT context, what you usually do is just to put some finite term in here. Well, in our case, something proportional to the determinant of the energy tensor and try to say some, you know, part of expansion, uh, expansion for instance. But if you do that, um, the form of the stress energy tensor remains always the same. So meaning that the stress energy tensor will always be given in this way uh, in terms of the Mariana fermium. But if you define the deformation in this way, in this kind of way, based on this recursion relation, the form of the stress energy tensor will always uh, keep changing. So this is really a critical difference between these two approaches. And this is also vital for this kind of theory to remain exactly solvable. Right. Um, you can also define the deformation in terms of Hamiltonian, which is simply given in this way, where the small q's are the charge densities associated to the constant charges, and the j's are the currents associated to, the, again, the charge densities via the usual continuity equation. And the first charge is chosen to be the momentum, and the second charge is the usual Hamiltonian. Um, in the language of a normalization group, this is uh, this kind of deformation is called an irrelevant deformation. 
meaning that this kind of deformation really changes the ultraviolet, ultraviolet structure of the theory uh, drastically. And uh, we will see the consequence of it uh, yeah, shortly. Um, right. In general, I prefer to define the TT bar deformation in terms of Hamiltonian because it makes it um, uh, clear that this kind of deformation can be also interpreted as a bilinear transformation in this way, where the generator is given in this bilinear form. And this also makes it clear that, uh, makes it sort of easier to make an analogous um, deformation in spin chains. Um, I'm saying analogous because you cannot quite define TT bar deformation in spin chains because there's no momentum conservation law. But still, if your spin chains, if your spin chain is integrable, then you can, you know, um, use the, um, define this kind of deformation, Boolean deformation, by combining uh, the charges available in that integrable spin chain. All right, and also um, defining in terms of Hamiltonian has a practical use which is that um, it allows us to write down the flow equation of the free energy density uh, in a straightforward way. So this is the flow equation. So it tells you how F varies as you change the deformation parameter sigma. And it's simply given in this way. And this kind of flow equation can be easily solved, uh, at least for CFTs, including the TT bar deformed critical Ising. Um, uh, which is simply like this. And the moment you write down this kind of, you know, solution, you realize that something's quite strange here because uh, suppose, say, um, the sigma is positive, so the deformation parameter is positive. Then you can easily immediately see that if the temperature, so one, might, one over beta, exceeds some certain value, which we often call Hagedorn temperature, then the inside of the square root becomes negative, which is quite problematic, and it, and it makes you know the interpretation of thermodynamics quite um, subtle. Well, well, put in the most uh, honest way, it's just that just doesn't make sense because the free energy is uh, complex. But this is in sort of in accordance with the intuition one can get from TT bar deformation, uh, which I'm going to briefly mention later that. Um, this kind of deformation changes the UV structure of the system drastically, meaning that, the, meaning that the system is actually not really local. I mean, this kind of QFT is uh, not any longer local in the usual sense. So if you look at the system at shorter and shorter distance, then the system tends to behave in a really uh, unusual way. And you can actually see that this is really happening by working on some simple models. Um, all right, so let me also talk about another important consequence of the TT bar deformation, which is um, the change of the symmetrics induced by the TT bar deformation. And in the case of integrable systems, including uh, 2D CFTs, uh, this has a really clear cut consequence, which is that the two body scatter matrix of the original theory uh, gets dressed in a very simple way. So it gets changed by simply having an extra factor, multiplicative factor, CDD factor, um, and that's it. That's the only change uh, coming from the TT bar deformation. So for instance, in the case of TT bar deformed critical Eisen model, this TT bar deformation induces a non-trivial uh, right and left scattering, and this is the change of the symmetrics. So originally, of course, there was no scattering between the right and left members, so there is no I mean, basic, basically the scatter matrix is trivial, it's minus one. But because of the deformation, now it acquires a new factor, which is the CDD factor, defined in this way. And this is going to be the new um, S matrix of the theory. So in a sense, CDD factor is uh, going to be really this, um, the um, new S matrix responsible for the right and left scattering in a TT bar uh, deformed criticalizing model. And um, visually, this is also, um, I mean, this can also be nicely visualized in this way. So initially, like I've been saying, there is no scattering between the left and the right members. So they just, you know, go through as if uh, nothing there upon their meeting. But once you do a deformation, the trajectories of them 
are altered. So they know that they exist and they can see and they talk to each other upon scattering and they undergo this kind of um, different trajectories with a phase shift being given in these ways. Um, so this is a really important consequence of, this, uh, of the uh, TT body formation. And this also uh, is quite in accordance with a picture um, uh, advocated in this paper by John Cardi and Benjamin Dion, which is that if you do, in general, if you do a TT body formation, then you can interpret uh, the kind of deformed theory as basically the same as the original theories, but uh, the, the underlying particles now acquire <laughs> width. And you can really explicitly see this kind of, you know, change by working out, say, uh, um, a simple classical free particles. And if you do a TT body formation to a simple classical um, free particles, you can see that what you get out of it is simply hard rod uh, systems. So this um, kind of picture is quite actually universal and it can, it can be seen by working out that kind of system. And I think this is, gives a really an intuitive picture as to what TTBA really, a TTBA deformation really does. Um, all right. So um, if you want to talk about hard dynamics for the TTBA deformed CFTs, um, you have to know how to do a thermodynamics, I mean, in particular, uh, TBA, thermodynamic bed standards for these kind of systems. And um, I think Olaja already gave a very nice introduction to this kind of thing. I guess I can go quickly here. So uh, the input, what you need is this, you know, new S matrix coming from the deformation uh, responsible for the right and left scattering. So I'm changing slightly, I'm changing the notation slightly here. So I'm between plus and minus instead of right and left. Um, and the TBA equation uh, corresponding to this TD bar deformed critical Ising uh, model is simply given in this way. And I think this pseudo energy already appeared in the largest talk. Um, it's what, what is happening here is essentially to incorporate the effect of, you know, the change of less metrics in this way. Um, and there are different, well, not so many ways, but uh, you know, a few ways to obtain this kind of TB equation. One is to really invoke the work by Bajanov and Lickenauk and Zamochko, this one, and um, say and claim that um, CFTs can be, 2D CFTs can be interpreted as massless limit of massive integrable quantum field theories. So if you do a TT by deformation to it, but uh, is induced by the deformation, you simply put in extra factor like this coming, um, which stems from the newly introduced scattering between the right and left movers. There's an alternative way actually to get this kind of TB equation, which is to say that TT bar deformed critical Ising model actually describes the effective infrared physics of the massless flow connecting the ultraviolet CFT. And so in this case, critical three critical Ising model and the uh, infrared CFT, so the critical Ising model. So it's a relatively old work by Zamochkov where he claimed that if you do uh, some sort of relevant perturbation to this critical Ising model, what you get is actually not the usual kind of scenario, but you get a massless flow of integral systems where the system remains always, um, so the flow is actually always, uh, it, it consists of massless integral systems. So this is quite um, unusual because usually if you do that kind of perturbation, you end up with some massive theories, but, um, for this particular case, at least, um, the system remains massless and, um, and this kind of flow connects the two endpoints, basically the UV CFT and the resulting infrared CFT. And if you try to extract the effective physics, effective theory around this infrared CFT, they are usually described by some relevant perturbations to this CFT. And that's nothing other than the TT by deformed critical Ising model. So in, in this kind, following this kind of logic, you can also obtain this kind of TB equation. But either way, this is you know what we are going to rely on, and uh, with which you can also compute some dynamic quantities, like for example, free energy density, using the usual TBA uh, technology, and you obtain this kind of expression relatively easily. And this precisely coincides with what I obtained 
by solving this kind of flow equation. So everything is really consistent so far. And um, from here on, I'm going to um, talk about general CFTs, not just um, feedback criticizing model. And um, in these cases, the only um, uh, change is that not only uh, do they have this kind of newly introduced um, uh, scattering coming from the CTBAR deformation, they also have some sort of terms corresponding to the scatterings. Well, not really scatterings, but more like interactions. Um, so terms are responsible for the interactions between, between the right movers and the left movers um, in the TV equation. So in the general CFTs case, you have some extra terms in here, but the structure doesn't really change and you can really uh, uh, do the computation like uh, in this simple case of the criticizing model. All right, so I guess we are ready for the uh, for doing it hydrodynamics, and um, I guess I don't really have much time. Five. Five minutes, okay. I guess I should really go quick then. Um, and um, I'm I'm grateful that uh, this is. I think I have to go through this because this was this uh, GHD was already introduced in the largest talk. So the whole point really here is that. I'm treating now the 2D CFTs and also the TT body form CFTs as integral systems. So you have to do uh, GHD, not instead of the usual kind of you know, conventional hydrodynamics. Um, and an important point here is really that the GHD equation is simply a single equation, or well, at least uh, when the system has only one particle species labeled by uh, the quasi momentum. So, um, this is going to, uh, I'm going to use this kind of uh, equation to describe the hydrodynamics of the TT bar deformed CFTs. And just to reiterate that uh, this rho of theta is um, um, the root density. So they, these are the this density. This is a density of the quasi particles and this effective velocity is a velocity of the quasi particle, some sort of average velocity of the quasi particles. Um, right, okay. So um, this effective velocity, which is quite important in GHD, is, has a very peculiar uh, property in TT body deformed CFTs in general, because it's, uh, it's theta independent, essentially. So if you, uh, you know, do a bit of computation, you immediate, immediately realize that this effective velocity doesn't quite depend on theta, but given by this kind of uh, expression. So it takes um, only two possible um, values where the, uh, in the case of thermal state, this is given by this, this simple way. And this, and this immediately also implies that um, the hydrodynamic equations in a TT bar deformed CFTs have a really interesting uh, property, which is that the first two equations corresponding to the energy conservation and the momentum conservation are decoupled from the rest of the hydrodynamic equation. So with this effective velocity, you can write down the GHD equation um, corresponding to the first two conservation laws in this simple way, which is quite surprising, I would say. And um, uh, interestingly, this kind of equation has appeared in, you know, previously in really different contexts. For instance, uh, it's been known that this equation is nothing other than the hydro equation for soliton densities in a, a famous uh, cellular automaton model called V54. So you can actually uh, have a dictionary between the energy quanta of the TT bar deformed CFTs and the solitons in the V54. But this uh, remains valid only at the level of hydrodynamics uh, because in general, thermodynamics of these systems are quite different. Um, and also another interesting observation is that um, this kind of kinetic equation was also obtained for two beam solitons in the context of uh, KDB equation uh, in this paper. And also the Riemann problem of this kind of kinetic equation was worked out explicitly. So it's interesting that this kind of equation uh, actually comes from, uh, 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 can be also found in different contexts. And in this, con in our case, this really comes from uh, microscopic model, which is the TT bar deformed critical, sorry, TT bar deformed CFTs. All right, so let's, uh, let me just go quickly here. Um, to understand, I mean, to say something on transport, I have to fix the initial 
uh, valid problem that I have in mind. And I'm going to use this kind of protocol, Prussian protocol, which is very simple. It's basically the step initial condition with respect to the temperature. And uh, with this initial condition, you can easily solve the Hadron equation in the 2D safety. So this is a pure safety. I'm not talking about the TT body formed case yet. And uh, the result is quite simple. So for any time larger, greater than zero, the next current or um, energy density and also the momentum or equivalently energy current are given in this very simple way. And this is simply because the moment you depart from the initial condition, um, a no equilibrium steady state is formed in between the light comb emanating like this. And in, inside the light comb, what you have is the, some kind of boosted state uh, described by this boosted density matrix where the beta rest and um, nu are given in this way. And this can also be obtained very mathematically rigorously um, you know, using the safety technology, which was done by Denis Bannard and Benjamin. All right, so the question now is how is this picture going to be changed by the deformation? Actually nothing, um, well, relatively little is going to be changed because essentially, okay, firstly, this um, phase diagram is modified only slightly. Essentially the shape of the light cone is altered um, because of the deformation. But the fact that the boosted state is merging inside the light cone remains valid. Also, the nest current, so the energy current that is formed inside the light comb, defined like this, um, is having almost similar form, very, you know, it's almost the same form, except this prefactor, which is now responsible for the scattering because, you know, this factor, you know, mixes the both temperatures, Ti and Tr. And also another change is coming from this bit. So the change of temperature, initially, there was just a bare temperature here, but with this uh, deformation, you have kind of dressing the temperature, if you like, in this way. And of course, this reproduces the pure safety result by taking the sigma to zero li uh, limit. And interestingly, um, this kind of, you know, form, the separation between the left and right members remains valid up to the first order in sigma. So the mix, mixing of this, you know, uh, effect of having both right and, right and left members kicking up after the first order. So, you know, second order and third order, etc. cetera. Um, also, you can compute the derivative weight defined in this way with this kind of expression, but I guess I have to skip this bit. And just to quickly mention that this kind of result was obtained also uh, by a completely independent method, which is the eddy safety calculus. And this was also discussed in our paper, but of course I have no time for that today. Um, okay, lastly, just quickly, um, we can also compute the diffusion uh, constant or the momentum Onsaga matrix of the theory using the fact that uh, this TT body form symmetries can be interpreted as integrable systems. And an interesting fact is that this Onsaga momentum Onsaga matrix is really given in a simple way. So like this in terms of the effective velocity and the brood weight. And it's quadratic in sigma, so it's uh, in proportion to the square of the uh, sigma. So if you take sigma to zero limit, of course, this goes to zero. And you can also confirm this kind of expression by a conformal perturbation uh, method up to the second order in sigma. So this suggests that no matter, you know, whatever underlying particle contents this safety has, so it doesn't matter if it's safety is chaotic, irrational or rational, um, the momentum of matrix seems to have a really universal structure just given in terms uh, by, you know, uh, center charge and the deformation parameter and this basic inputs, but this is hard to compute holographically. Um, all right, I guess I have no time for that, so skipping. Um, I guess there's several directions one can go from this kind of study. One can, of course, try to study uh, and different kind of still exactly solvable deformations like JT bar deformation, for instance, in the case of uh, where the system has a U1 conservation law. You can also uh, try to use this kind of result to connect, to say something about the connection between the chaos and diffusion, uh, which has been known for a while. So it seems like diffusion and chaos are intimately related, at least in the holographic uh, systems. 
So with our uh, explicit, explicit division constant, maybe you can say something about chaos, but this is a bit of um, still a fantasy. Um, maybe modern to Earth direction could be to say something about uh, extended fluctuation relation in TT body from Swifties. So this is a very interesting relation saying that once you know the exact profile of the energy current in the non equilibrium city state, you can recover the full um, large deviation function or equivalently the scaled cumulant generating function. But this is um, um, uh, believed to be true only for really simple models. And I think it's still unclear if this is true in the TT body form Swifties. So I guess it's a nice thing to check. All right, so sorry for the time, but thank you. Thank you very much. So we are a bit late. Is there a very short question? And after that, I suggest that uh, other question will be for the break. Yeah, okay, yes, Benjamin. Uh, higher current means that uh, like TT bar squared and TT bar. Uh, no, that would be really difficult because the nice thing about TT bar deformation is, you know, it makes things still exactly solvable so that you can apply this kind of integral method. But once you put this higher current term, um, that would be highly non-trivial to keep track of these properties. I'm not sure what, would, what should be in general expected as a consequence of the higher, um, current um, deformation, they are, I think, less irrelevant. So I'm not sure if how much effect they would have in this kind of transport phenomena, which is supposedly low energy. So I'm not sure. Okay, thank you very much. We'll now welcome uh, an online uh, talk from uh, Eric van den Eijden from uh, New York University on extreme events, tail statistics and large deviation theory in fluid flows. Yes, okay. 